Is it toasted or toasted? Toasted. Hey, this is Justin Ozuka, and you're watching Toasted. Welcome to Amsterdam, man. Thank you. You've been here before a lot of times, right? Yeah. Because I recall a famous sleeve of your previous album. Say it again, sir? The, the sleeve picture of your previous oh, album? yeah, right, exactly, yeah. yeah. How did that uh, come about, actually? Um, so uh, we finished the second album, and uh, the drummer I was playing with at the time was a photographer. And uh, we went out walking uh, through Amsterdam, and um, he was taking photos. Um, we were specifically looking for a picture we could use for the cover of the album, and uh, we had a, a film camera. It was a film camera. And we went down to different streets and uh, went to that famous shopping district and uh, took that shot. And then uh, we got lunch and picked up. He, he dropped it off at like the, uh, the place to get developed, the camera place, and we came back and really happy with that shot. And just, yeah, it just sort of happened here. Is it just a coincidence that it happened here, or do you have a relationship yeah. with Amsterdam? No, I mean, certainly we've been here several times over the past few years um, and have always played really great uh, shows here um, in terms of just the feeling of the audience, and um, it's always been really special here for us um, since the beginning, pretty much. Um, so it is kind of a coincidence that we ended up taking the picture. It wasn't like we had any specific plan to capture anything you know, in terms of photography in Holland or anything. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of a coincidence, but it's always been special for us here. Are you playing uh, the, the biggest hall of the Melkweg uh, right now? Uh, I've, I've lived in Amsterdam since I was a kid, and actually I've never been here, and, and I'm struck by how big it is. Because, I mean, you easily fill out, like, 1,500 people halls right now? Well, um, it certainly is a beautiful venue. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, it's it's always been really special here in Amsterdam. Um, so, nice, nice to be back, yeah. Nice to be back. Uh, your last album was three, four years ago, right? Yeah, roughly about that. What took you so long? Um, well, I had to, I had to kind of take a break from touring and uh, also from just music in general, I think, and uh, and then as I got into thinking about the next album, um, lots of different changes uh, for me. I, I ended up uh, learning how to produce. I got um, inspired by a friend of mine who was producing and he, he said I should produce. And so I uh, got into production and uh, learned how to use, you know, programs and, um, you know, the technical aspect that's involved in production. And uh, so that took a while. And did, you, did you produce other musicians as well? No. No, I, I, uh, I got into production mainly so I could uh, work on this next album um, because I just wasn't sure um, I would be able to achieve uh, something that I felt truly proud of, um, hiring a producer. Um, and so I decided that I would learn how to do it, and I approached it that way. Um, but yeah, no, not, not other people, really, just my, my own stuff at this point. So now you have your home studio and you're a producer as well and you have this brilliant new album. Yeah, I suppose uh, I have a home, little home set up and uh, enough to get uh, the, the fundamentals and then sometimes I'll go to a studio and track uh, a drum sound or something like that, you know. I think the album is very atmospheric. I think it's, uh, again, different from what you did before. Um, more synthy. Why did you move in that direction? Um, well, I just uh, wanted to create an album that I, uh, that uh, I felt fulfilled by uh, based on the kind of stuff that I had been listening to at that time and at this point as well. Um, um, I listened to a lot of classical music and uh, I really um, began to appreciate uh, some of those uh, magnificent compositions. Uh, like for instance, uh, Claire de Lune, for instance. I really enjoy the uh, this one version by um, a pianist uh, named Sviatoslav Richter. Uh, he he uh, he just has a, he's he's got a great uh, interpretation um, for a lot of great pieces. Uh, and so yeah, I just uh, sort of got into uh, 
that genre of music and it opened my eyes to you know the possibilities of uh, of composing and uh, producing as well and so I really wanted to take chances and experiment a lot and um, I didn't want to think about uh, you know the typical mold I suppose I, I wanted to experiment a lot so this album is kind of uh, a uh, product of that, I think. Is this your dark side of the moon? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't. I, I I didn't want to create an album that was dark, uh, but um, I suppose it has a nightly feel to it. Um, it's a journey, right? You described it. Uh, what I read in your press bio was this is a journey into music. You start off, and of course, you start off with nasty, and you end, and then you end off with Lucerne. Why is that? Um, it just uh, sort of came together that way that the first and last song would be uh, a choral kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that would be fun to do. So, yeah. But why the title also? Is it about the city? Is it because No. Um, I mean, most of the lyrics and the, the titles for this project are based on just the, the combination of the letters, the way it sounds and the way it appears. Um, and beyond that, there there aren't really any more meanings to it. It's more just the aesthetic of it and how it how it sounds and how it looks. Well, you got me there because I was delving into the lyrics and I was delving into the themes. And now he's laughing. And and actually, I thought, well, it, it does make sense. I mean, Hera, she's uh, of course uh, the, the sister, but also the wife of uh, of Zeus, and she's also symbolic for heaven and and uh, the skies and rain and the sun. There's a lot of references to the weather and the sun in your lyrics as well. Sure. But that is purely coincidental. I guess so, yeah. I'm looking for stuff that's not there. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, I I, I, uh, I don't think that there was, th I mean, at least in the, my process, there wasn't like some kind of hidden secret or anything like that. But uh, I suppose I, I also just want to leave the songs open for interpretation and, you know, it'd be nice if everyone could have their own interpretation of the songs and and the album and the experience and stuff the sea and the air and and also earth are themes that all are, are echoing throughout your work is it also coincidental or do you have a connection with the sea um well i mean i'm i'm inspired by nature certainly and uh <clears throat> those are those are the things that uh I can relate to, I suppose. So when I write something and um, talk about the wind or the warmth of the wind or something, then it, it just is something that makes me feel good. And uh, I like writing about that. Beautiful songs. Let me let us go through a couple of songs that I um, that I found. Um, again, uh, Lucerne is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a brilliant but strange song. It, uh, it's beautiful that you end it with, with that. We talked about that because it's an instrumental. You're known as a singer-songwriter, but there's lots of instrumental stuff on there on your new album. Yeah, um, I think uh, you know when I listen to music, it, it doesn't matter if there's a singer uh, or lyrics at all. Um, it's really just the sound that I'm listening to. So I wanted to take take the role of creating something that I felt I could listen to and feel um, soothed by, I guess, or you know. Um, so yeah, to me, it doesn't need to be, you know, just because I've written songs <clears throat> and, you know, the production has been like an acoustic guitar and vocals or something like that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really want to do that over and over again. And I think uh, the sooner I can start taking chances, the better. Um, and, and kind of open up the, um, open up the, the songs, I guess, to, to just being able to do whatever feels good. I think you are uh, you, you you're a talented songwriter. I mean, you have the gift to write hit songs. Do you realize that when you write a song that it could be a hit? Um, no, I don't really think about it. To be honest, uh, usually I write write the songs, and you know maybe a friend will say, "Hey, that song is really special. I really like that song," and uh, it's nice to hear that, you know. But I, I never know what's good and what's not good, really at the end of it until someone says, hey, that sounds good. And then I say, if I trust their opinion, you know, then uh, then I guess there's some gratification there or something. The song that I really, really like is uh, Right By You. It's also the, the first single of your new album. Um, there's some, there, there was a nice uh, piece written about it on rapgenius.com. Um, and it's like, you're, you're really 
uh, exploring your soft crooning quality. And I think that's really well put. You have a beautiful croon voice as well. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. No, you really don't know? Because, I mean, uh, really soulful there, I think. Cool. And there's even some uh, prints in there. I thought a little bit I Would Die For You or a little bit Purple Rain, and kind of, because you can really stretch your voice. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't listen to any prints or anything like that when I was uh, working on the music. So I don't really know how it, uh, how it comes off, I guess. Yeah. Do you have a lot of people? You, la- you write a lot of love songs. Um, and uh, to me, it's like, it's personal stuff. Uh, you know, you write about personal stuff, personal love songs. There must be a lot of people who approach you and they're like, well, this song really meant a lot to me. Sure, that happens sometimes. What do you think? How do you react? Um, it feels good. It's nice uh, when, you know, if I release something and someone appreciates it, then that's a nice feeling. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a really, really cool feeling. Well, going out to four million people, I mean, it's like the views you have on, on, the, on a couple of your videos, it's, that must be amazing. It's pretty neat, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're, you're really, you know, that thrilled about it. Sorry? It, it doesn't seem like you're that thrilled about it. You well, don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly is. Uh, it's actually kind of mind-blowing when you think about, you know, you put something out and perhaps someone's listening to it right now. That's kind of a, that's kind of a really cool feeling. Um, yeah. So you write music and you make music because you like it, and then you see what happens. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, all I can really do is create something that I feel happy with and then put it on the fridge, and, uh, <laughs> you know, people can see it, and, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Back to the album. Uh, the title of your album is uh, U- Ulysses, but it's just spelled differently, Ulysses. Why is that? Um... Again, it's kind of just the approach of this whole project. Um, none of the words necessarily mean anything, um, but the combination of the letters uh, and the way that it sounds um, is why we chose U-L-Y-S-E-E-S. And uh, I, I was working, and I have been working with a good friend of mine who has uh, been helping me with the aesthetic and the visual aspect of the project, and I really uh, trust his perspective. and. So uh, he's helped me with uh, some of these names as well. Um, and also the music, I've showed him the music and um, I trust his opinion. And uh, who, who is he? He's a, he's a dear friend of mine. Um, you can name him? His name is, is Sai. Yeah. And uh, he's from Japan. We went to school together. And um, wow. yeah, so yeah, it's been nice to collaborate. And a good friend of mine, another good friend of mine, the guy who got me into production, he's also been influential. Um, to this album it is a journey right i mean of course it's aptly named when you call it ulysses it's that it is a journey into sound a journey into music but so people shouldn't look into the lyrics i mean it's more yeah i suppose like whenever i whenever i read poetry or um listen to music i'm always <clears throat> drawn to certain things and um I suppose i have my own experience with it you know Um, and, you know, perhaps the way that I interpret the lyrics, you know, that I think it's really, it's really clear in my mind that this is what the lyrics mean. Um, perhaps it doesn't mean that to the writer. Um, but for me, yeah, you know, there isn't really anything concrete about the lyrics or any type of message or anything like that that I'm trying to, uh, portray with the songs or the lyrics or names or anything like that. Did did you read James Joyce's book at all or? No, I didn't. I haven't read it, but, um. I tried. It was boring as hell. <laughs> really? I've heard it. I, I, I guess I've heard uh, different things about it. Either you, either you love it or you hate it, apparently. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it takes so long to get into it. I was like, oh. Yeah. I couldn't. Hey, back to your album. Um, let's see other songs that I liked. Um, Dreaming. It, it, it flows into uh, Eyes Changing Color. Uh, is, it, is it one? Is it two songs? I mean, it's, it sounds like a composition, actually. Yeah, there's two pieces of it, and uh, they both, they are, you know, interconnected. Um, but the first part is uh, is just the lyric and the vocal, and then it kind of journeys into eyes changing color, which is, uh, I suppose there's more arrangement to it. Uh, but it's, yeah, two separate songs, but, no, well, two separate sides of the song, I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
because it's I mean it's special if you if you if you if you're new to the album and you see the track listing you go like well there's different songs you put it on and I played it again and again and again and suddenly you go like hey I heard this before and then you notice that it's actually a composition within maybe three or actually four pieces there's like a theme that comes in and out right yeah, yeah. certainly yeah you did that on purpose well I mean for that song it was just uh, it just happened by chance like at first it was just one song that I created in the project and then uh, and then <clears throat> and then I just thought hey maybe I can cut this in half and use this for you know one track and then use this part for the second track how many songs did you write actually for this album did you write a lot more and did you cut it back to this um for this album I probably wrote um, well I mean I, I, ha I had a lot of songs that I had written in the past that I revisited for this uh, and I do that for when I'm creating something there's stuff that I'd written many years ago that you know that worked for this project for instance um, but uh, maybe 20 songs or so roughly and then you edit it back to 10 yeah yeah how do you do that and why do you do that uh, it's just uh, the process I guess you know um, trying to complete something that feels whole uh, all the songs and all the aspects of the songs are complete within themselves as well. Um, and everything's har har harmonious. Um, that's just kind of uh, the way that um, that it works for me, at least, um, to, you know, get all the pieces together in the right place. And sometimes it might be 15 songs or sometimes five songs, you know. But for this, it was 10. And, you know, the songs that made it were the songs that worked well with the aesthetic for this is it hard sometimes to kill your darlings <laughs> um sometimes it's hard to let go of something um but uh i think i learned quickly well not very quickly but i learned in this process that uh you know the sooner i can let go of something and not be so attached to it the better for the creative process you know some things are just you, you finish them you spend months on them and then you realize it's not right and you kind of have to scrap it and that's okay that's part of the process I would say that's a very Zen thing to say actually I think <laughs> I don't know uh, it, it teaches you patience right yeah I think it's it's nice to uh, to create something and not be so attached to it and and to be okay to let it all go um, I, I enjoy doing that and uh, it was hard at the time but once I got over the fact that uh, it wasn't right, you know, and then you just kind of have to face re face the facts and, you know, realize it's not right and that's it. What certainly is right is the artwork. I think it's beautiful. Uh, at the first glance you think it's an iris of an eye. Apparently, that's what I think, it's a shot from the International Space Station. Is that true? Mm. No, that's not true. What is it? Uh, it's a photo, but it's a secret. <laughs> what the cover is and such. Why is it a secret? Um, I think it's nice to um, to imagine. And, uh. <laughs> I, I, now I want to know what it is, of course. Everybody wants to know what it is. You will keep it secret. Yeah. I think it's it's fun that way. Because also the picture that you have on your Facebook side, it's like it looks like a satellite shot. Yeah, that one is uh, it's an aerial shot um, from space. You won't elaborate on this guy, probably, right? <laughs> well... I mean, that's what that, the shot on the Facebook is that. It's in the uh, Right By You video. But it's not connected to the artwork of the album? No. Well, I mean, it's part of the aesthetic and the experience, but it's, uh, no, they don't really have a relation, I would say. Will the album be out on vinyl as well? Um, at this point, there are no plans to create a vinyl, but uh, perhaps, I mean, we're working on, a, on an art package um, currently for the album. What will the art package uh, be like? It's just, um, um, I suppose it's higher quality in terms of uh, the materials and um, the printing as well. So we're in the works for that at the, at the moment. And when will that be released, what do you reckon? I'm um, not sure. Hopefully uh, in the next few months. I delved into your biography, of course. Um, one thing that struck me is you were scouted uh, when you were still pretty young. Uh, you got a deal offered by Universal, and you turned them down. <laughs> yeah. Why? 
Um, I uh, it was just one of those things, you know, like uh, you kind of have to make uh, make moves according to the situation and the time and and all that, you know. And uh, at that time, it just wasn't right for me. I was just starting out and uh, <clears throat> hadn't yet figured out really what I wanted to do. And um, it would have been too soon to have signed with uh, them at that point. So, um, yeah, so it sort of happened that way. You are very focused, right? I mean, you know what you want. To some extent, yeah. I think um, taking the time off recently, well, in the past three years and working on this project has really, uh, has really um, cleared a lot of things for me. I, I think I... I'm a lot more clear in terms of, you know, uh, what I want to do with my project. And, uh, and yeah, so more recently I would say I feel a little bit more clear with everything. You just started touring? You just small tour through Europe, right? Will there be more gigs? Um, yeah, so we're playing the shows in, in Western Europe for until the 15th, and then um, we're going to go through... <coughs> A few cities in North America, uh, and and then I think we'll just see what happens and kind of go with the flow. You're not you're not very active on Facebook and on Twitter, right? Is that not your thing, or I couldn't find the right uh, the right Twitter account, maybe? Mm, I mean, I think uh, those those uh, platforms are valuable, and uh, you know. I, uh, yeah, I, I suppose I don't really talk about many personal things on those sites, um, but it just feels better to keep it informative, informative. <laughs> and uh, yeah, straight to the point, I'd say. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm approaching those, those programs or whatever. Will you be back uh, in Europe for the festival season? Um, I'd hope so. But uh, we finished the album in January, and uh, I think the deadlines for a lot of the festivals were in December and stuff, so um, we're kind of late for festivals. Um, but hopefully we play a few, and uh, maybe next year we'll play some more. Well, looking forward to see you again. Certainly. Yeah, me too. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.